Right, hello guys. Um, a few people have been getting a bit confused on uh, the problem with ground loops. What is a ground loop? Uh, what does it affect on your FPV system? Uh, why it does it? And how to get around it? Um, so I'm going to do this brief introduction. I've never done one of these before, so bear with me. Um, just to go through what it is, uh, how it happens, how to stop it, um, why, what and how. Basically, uh, so what I've got on my very small board compared to Bruce's is uh, your basic simple FPV system where you've got a motor we're going power from the ESC. The ESC goes to a current sensor which goes to the LiPo. Uh, you've got an OSD and AP, and this represents the throttle cable or the, the servo cable that um, sends the back power down and the signal to the throttle to tell the motor how fast to go. Now the ground loop only exists if you're running an OSD or an AP. If you don't have either of those, you will not have a ground loop. So you don't have to worry about this. But in FPV, because we use OSDs and APs so often, that you're going to have this ground loop. So what is a ground loop? A ground loop is a path for um, the ground in this case, to pass uh, in more than one direction. So normally when your motor's running, your positive runs down here into the AC, JFET's distribute it uh, with the timing, your motor spins around. It then returns down the negative wire and then into the light bulb. That's perfect, that's how it should work. The uh, current sensor, sensor measures the uh, current being used and everybody's happy. The problem is when you add an OSD or an AP, you connect this throttle cable up to the OSD and you've also got your cable going from your current sensor to your AP. Now both the current sensor, your ESC signal wire and the OSD all have a ground. So there's a ground wire there that goes along to the OSD. So that is now connected via the current sensor to that ground. So that's common ground. The ESC's ground comes from the main cable coming in, but also the signal wire coming out is common ground. That goes to your OSD and AP as well. Because it comes round and across and in and out again, you've got that ground path to the LiPo, and you've got another ground path to the LiPo, and that there is your loop. Now ideally nothing happens, and what, 8 times out of 10 nothing will happen. It will work as, as it's intended to. You increase the throttle, the current in the positive and the negative goes up as it supplies the ESC, as the ESC supplies the motor. All is great. What happens occasionally, and it's happened to me twice with uh, Turnergy Plush before we noticed there was a, a potential problem here, was as you give normally high um, current demand, if you give high throttle and you ask it for a high current demand for, for Ohm's law, for reasons that affects Ohm's law, the path of least resistance that should be across here, suddenly becomes this path here. Now this could be a breakdown on the connector, it can be a bad connection if you're using um, pushing connectors on the, on the current sensor, the tracks the, neck, the ground tracks on the current sensors they're only a PCB with um, the copper on top uh, and maybe a bit of solder and sometimes it can't take 50 or 60 amps going through it so it starts to break down and then the electricity finds that path easier so what happens is the 50 amps that should be going through this big thick cable that can take it suddenly tries to go through this tiny little cable that can't take 50 amps or 40 or 30, whatever it is. I'm just throwing 50 in there as like a hypothetical number. So well, the current, the motor current tries to go down this way here, tries to go through your OSD or AP, and then tries to go back through your current sensor and return to the light pole. What happens is this way is too small, so it, it gets very hot very quick and then starts to melt. This way it starts to melt and the track on inside the OSD, the common ground track where all the grounds go to, um, is way, way 
smaller rated than the current sensor one so normally it destroys your RSD first so what happens is the current goes through it blows the ground track on your RSD when it blows the ground track on your RSD you suddenly have no picture if it's an AP you've lost control of your servos because the RSD has gone off so your plane crashes and it normally crashes in a ball of flames because all this lot is on fire so we want to avoid this at all costs there's a couple of ways we can do it you could remove this ground here you could take that ground out of that cable there and now the voltage can come down uh, the current can come down into your OSD but it can't get to your current sensor because you broke the wire so the current doesn't flow because there's no path so then that fixes the problem so you can do that the OSD still needs a ground though but that's okay because the OSD gets its ground from this wire here that goes to the ground there so it's still got a no volts re reference or return path for all the electricity it's using so that's, that fixes that there is another option though which is a better option we'll put this, this wire back in and that is this wire here now this wire oops as I rub it out this wire can supply the OSD with its back voltage it's 5 volts to run its servos um, and anything else gimbals and stuff uh, well, in fact, yeah, servo gimbals. Um, so if we cut this wire there, now there is no ground path to the OSD to let the current flow. The OSD still has its ground with the current sensor, so the OSD still works fine. Um, it still has 5 volts coming from the back, and it still has no volts. So your ESC can still supply the OSD or AP with 5 volts still. That's great, that's fixed it, that has fixed your ground loop. The downside of that is if the motor ever draws too much and the ESC goes into thermal shutdown, when it goes into thermal shutdown it will kill your back. So if it kills your back, your ESC shuts down, your motor stops, your AP still wants to try and fly at level or still wants to have, let you have enough control to make a safe landing. But if your back's shut down, then there is no control anymore. So it, that's not a ground loop problem, that's an overheating ESC problem, which is quite common. So can we avoid that? Well, yes we can. So what we do is we, we remove the red and the black wire from the ESC. So now you've got the throttle signal going back to the ESC to tell the throttle where it wants to be. But of course it needs a ground. Well, it's got a ground because the ground goes through there. So that's all you need to make that ESC work. But now you've got no 5 volts to run your servos off. So what we do is we add our own standalone back. Here. So what we do is we go off the output because you want the current sensor to measure the power it's using. And you take your power there. And we'll get a ridge just to keep it right. And you take a positive to your back. And then it comes out as 5 volts. And then it comes down as no volts. Now you've got a loop here again, but the motor current is never going to go around there to go from there to there because it's trying to get back to the light bulb, so it will always go down that way. So now, if your ESA overheats, your back's got nothing to do with it, so your motor might stop, your ESA might shut down. But your OSD is still powered by your back, so it will still fly level. If you flick return to home, it will still try and return to home, although it won't be under power. But it will still leave you with control and without a ground loop. So that's how we wire uh, your, o your OSD, your AP, with a, U with a separate U-back. We forget about the back that's in here, because it's much safer. We take the input from the U-back as close as you can to the current sensor because the, any closer to the ESC and it might find it a, an easier path and then you're going to blow your your back up because your ground's linked so the closer these two are together the better because there's no there's no uh, path of least resistance going around in a great big loop when all you've got to do is go from there to there so that's how we do it we just take the one wire to the ESC 
We take the U back off the current sensor output, so it still registers its milliamps used. And we take that to the OSD AP, and everything runs smooth. If you're doing it with a dual motor setup, you do exactly the same thing. You've got another ESC here, really badly drawn. Hang on, that was terrible. What are you doing? Right, another ESC, say for a Twin Star or My Fly uh, Dream, My Twin Dream, even another motor there. there. And again, all we do is we take the sig signal wire only. So green in this case because because I don't have a white because it's a white board and I don't have an orange so I'm using green but yeah there's the signal wire from both ESCs join them together so they both get the same signal both go to the OSD no ground loops whatsoever uh, the big the larger cables uh, both join on together the closer you make them the better. <clears throat> and then you take a bigger, thicker cable away. But like, we'll take this one off here, and then we got one goes over to there. So your power comes in your ACs, you've only got your signal cables coming back. Everybody's happy. So that's how we do it. Alright, thanks. See you later.